Hey, welcome back. Okay, so let's see a way to actually collect user information. Yes. So in order to do that, we need a table, obviously, that uh, we can use for that. So I've uh, listed here, there are two tables that we need to create. The first table is the orders themselves. This order is like a, the actual receipt, but the receipt has details in there of the items that were actually purchased. So this is where we have the order details table. So orders, order details. So let's see how we can uh, create those two tables. So let's go to the eShop.db and click on new. And now don't be too concerned about the number of columns because you can always add a column in future as you see uh, the need arise. So let's try with the smaller one that's uh, order details. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. So let's add three more. All right, so let's call it order underscore details. Now we have the ID, but we would need the order ID as well. And then we will need to know. Uh, actually, no, we don't need that. We use, we need just the quantity description amount. I think I did forget to put the date here. So yes, yes, description amount. Okay, so here we will get the product ID as well now the, the issue is we could have just gotten the product id itself and then when we when the customer reads uh tries to check what they bought then they can read from the database but the problem is that uh the prices of things keep changing over time so it's not a good idea to read from the original uh product id in case the prices have changed so it's better to immortalize the current state of the product at that time so as much as we can save the product id but it's good to save everything like the quantity description amount and total here so total and then we just add that product id just in case okay i think uh, we are good here and because order details are going to be quite many, let's use big integer, order ID, of course, big integer. The quantity can be int. Nobody's going to be buying billions of uh, items. It's not even billions, it's gazillions uh, that this number can hold. So a description is variable character. Amount is a double, of course, same as total. The product ID is going to be big integer, like that. So all these except variable character require some kind of description. So just make sure the description is equal to the length of the description in products so that uh, you don't waste any space. So let's go to the structure of this guy and see what we gave it. So description here has 200, which is quite a lot. So. 200 the rest of these guys can figure it out on their own because they are actual numbers so here i will make sure i take auto increment on id and make sure it's the primary key and that should do it also it's a good idea to have these accept no values but for now because when loading the data we're going to be adding every single column so i don't think that is a requirement so i'll just save here so now we have order details here let me add a few indices here for order id in case i want to search by that uh, whatever will be used to search here like product id maybe uh, probably not I think the others are not really that interesting. Maybe the description, I guess. You may want to search for that. 
Okay, so let's create our other table. So let's click new again. And this one is the main one, which is orders. Make sure the R is there. And so here, let's look at how many uh, columns we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, actually. So we have four here, so let's add a few to make six. Let's go ahead. ID. Did I put user ID on the other one as well? Yes, no, no. I did not. Anyway, so ID, order ID, user ID. So let's go with that. Order ID, user ID. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, so the imp most important, obviously, is the delivery address because otherwise um, you won't be able to know where to take your items once somebody has paid total so here we have to see the total this is the cumulative total of the whole entire order including all items in that order so country state zip so say country let's look at the state let's look at the zip code and what else we got here tax shipping tax in case we do add it and then the shipping cost just shipping is enough and let's add one more and put date because we do need to know when this order was made like this and let's make sure that the type is date time shipping uh, this is an amount so this is the double tax double zip mm, variable character now zip you may be test, uh, tempted to put uh, numeric because a numeric uh, type because they are numbers but keep in mind that with a numeric uh, data type if i have a number like 0345 the zero is going to be removed because uh, it's an integer so it doesn't need that zero at the beginning so if your numbers begin with a zero uh, it's not good to use uh, numeric. You might want to use variable character. So let's just put something like 6 here. State variable character. Maybe 20. Country. Similar situation. Total. Uh, double. Address variable character. Let's put uh, 10, 24. And then we have a big int, another big int, another big integer. Auto increment, primary key on the ID. All right, so uh, this is looking good. Now, some of these items will know, may not be filled in, like the zip code, the state, the tax. So these we can tick to make sure that they allow no values. So we don't get an error when... Uh, if we don't have values in there so country so all these that are non-numeric i think uh, you can uh, put them on no just to be sure okay so looking at that we should be done click click a click and there we go so order id of course we will need to add an index now be careful here do not add the unique index key here just uh, make sure it's the index here and how do you make sure of that? Just look at down here where the keys are. Uh, it should be big tree tree, big this one right here, I think. Uh, yes. Unique, no. So this is important here. You can check the params of a, uh, uh, a key here, or you can drop it if you want. So let's do the same for user ID. And maybe the date, because we may want to search by the date. Okay, so that is uh, looking good. So at least now we have two more uh, orders and order details, which we can use to save that data.
All right, so I'll see you in the next video where we try to save some data into these tables.